Key point one, the ripple effect of empathy. In today's world, where individualism often takes center stage, it's easy to push aside the profound impact of understanding another person's emotions. We forget that showing empathy may significantly influence the lives around us. On the other hand, there are plenty of stories like Luke's, a young sixth grader. Witnessing the hardships of those less fortunate, he chose to reach out. Initially, he would deliver blankets, but his next visit unveiled deeper community needs, nudging him to make a greater difference. Empathy fuels actions that can trigger a chain reaction of positivity. When we deeply resonate with someone else's feelings, it creates an empathetic breakthrough. Such profound moments serve as catalysts, activating deeper empathy and propelling us to act. These actions cause an enormous ripple effect, like dropping a pebble in a pond. One compassionate deed inspires another, forming a cascade of kindness and understanding. When we focus on ourselves, our world contracts as our problems loom large. But when we focus on others, our world expands. Daniel Goleman Of course, empathy isn't one-sided. You receive something good in return when you reach out with understanding and care. Acting with compassion benefits the person you're helping, and you, a relationship of mutual enrichment. So, where does this leave us? If empathy can bridge societal gaps and foster connections, shouldn't we strive for more of these breakthroughs? The next time you encounter someone facing a challenge or going through a rough patch, think of that sixth grader, consider a minor helpful action and start there. Let his story remind you that by feeling with others, you enhance their life and yours. And now, let's begin our journey toward understanding empathy's profound impact and how it can create waves of change. Key point two, lessons from an unexpected teacher. Picture a classroom in a remote community in Alberta, Canada. Third graders sit enthralled around a large green blanket. The show's star is Baby Joshua, a seven-month-old infant, and a surprising lesson on emotional literacy. This initiative created by writer Mary Gordon is named Roots of Empathy. The driving principle is simple. Leverage a baby's raw, unfiltered emotions to teach children about understanding and recognizing feelings. With bright eyes and alert minds, the students meet Joshua three times, watching in wonder as he grows and changes in mere weeks. Their observations are astute and perceptive. Whether it's a subtle yawn indicating his tiredness or a vibrant giggle that echoes joyfully, each of Joshua's actions becomes a window into understanding emotions. And a cry is a cue for deeper conversations, perhaps about hunger, discomfort, or a mere longing for attention. The purest, unfiltered emotions offer the most significant lessons on human nature. But Mary Gordon's program dives deeper. In addition to recognizing feelings, it teaches people how to comprehend them. Why does Joshua feel a certain way? This question nudges the students to walk in his tiny yet significant shoes. They gently steer towards seeing his perspective and nurturing empathy. These sessions with Joshua are more than fun interactions. They're transformative experiences. Through them, the kids grasp that emotions are a universal language. It's a dialect that goes beyond age barriers, cultural divides, or linguistic differences. Through their engagement with Joshua, they move away from passively observing and begin to learn actively and absorb life's invaluable lessons on emotional intelligence. Additionally, this example and approach to learning reminds us of the boundless potential in unexpected encounters. The young minds in that remote community are embarking on a journey of emotional evolution guided by an infant. As they do, they're sculpting themselves into understanding, compassionate, and emotionally literate individuals ready to navigate the world. After all, sometimes our instructors come in the most unanticipated forms. Let's remain open to those lessons to become the best versions of ourselves. Key point three, rooted in morality. Picture a time that echoes the simple days of the 1950s, a period many recall as the happy days when kids reveled in simple toys and authentic childhood joys. Now meet Chesley, a young boy growing up near Denison, Texas, immersed in a serene backdrop of camping, hiking, and the sheer excitement of the town's single cinema. Values ran deep in Chesley's household. His parents taught him the importance of respect, particularly toward older people. Their teachings also instilled a profound sense of duty to society and a relentless work ethic. These lessons would stay with young Chesley and shape his entire life. His childhood days began with mandatory chores and helping his father with daily tasks, teaching him the value of hard work and persistence. Meanwhile, his mother served as an example of service and selflessness. One evening in 1964, the family watched a news report detailing the harrowing fate of Kitty Genovese, a young woman brutally assaulted in New York. 38 individuals either heard her pleas or witnessed the assault, but none stepped up. This story deeply shocked Chesley, betraying everything he had learned about compassion and accountability from his parents. A strong moral compass is the foundation for empathy, steering actions based on ethical beliefs. Kitty Genovese's tale underscores the value of moral identity, which goes beyond distinguishing right from wrong and calls on us to act on our beliefs, especially during another's hour of need. However, the modern world is following a different trajectory. 
Achievements and accolades overshadow moral values. As accomplishments take the limelight, humble moral milestones like gestures of kindness or selflessness often remain in the shadows. That's why nurturing empathy in the next generation, which requires a shift in perspective, is so vital. Children must recognize and cherish their moral strengths, viewing themselves as considerate beings attuned to others' emotions and thoughts. By doing so, they naturally gravitate toward kindness, contributing to a more empathetic society. Moral identity isn't just a trait, but a force. This underlying current pushes individuals like Chesley to intervene, act, and stand up for righteousness. Instead of being passive observers, let's champion what's right, fostering a world radiant with compassion. Key point four, seeing through another person's eyes. Another exemplary lesson in empathy occurred in a Riceville classroom in April 1968. Third grade students were enthusiastic about their hero of the month, Martin Luther King Jr., however. The unsettling news of his assassination hit them hard, raising questions about discrimination and racism. Their teacher, Jane Elliott, recognized the vital task before her, explaining these grave issues to children who grew up in an all-white community. To do this, Elliott designed a groundbreaking lesson. She divided the 28 kids into two groups by sorting students based on eye color, one with blue or green eyes and the other with brown eyes. The brown-eyed group was labeled superior, getting various privileges from extended playtime to favored spots in lunch queues. In stark contrast, the second group had to deal with restrictions and diminished rights. The atmosphere in the room immediately shifted. Brown-eyed students rose with newfound dominance, while their blue and green-eyed counterparts sank into uncertainty and hesitance. Elliot's experiment showed the deep-seated impact of discrimination on relationships. Empathy is one of the few things that can truly connect people. Yet, Elliot's objective was about much more than mere division. She wanted students to understand discrimination's real and tangible scars. By stepping into another's shoes, the students experienced firsthand the sting of prejudice, understanding its harrowing consequences. Thus, the Riceville classroom became proof of the significance of perspective-taking, an integral facet of empathy. Truly absorbing the feelings, viewpoints, and misfortunes of others forges genuine compassion. Exercises in perspective-taking shift, focused from the self to the broader realm of shared human experiences, countering today's all-consuming self-centeredness. Children skilled in perceiving the viewpoints of others show heightened empathy and excellent conflict resolution skills. They radiate understanding, are less prone to rash judgments, and appreciate diversity. Their interactions with others are harmonious, and they become the ambassadors of positive change. It's about recognizing that understanding others includes noting their emotions. It involves diving deep into their challenges and experiences, forging bonds that celebrate shared humanity. The call for empathy urges you to step beyond established boundaries, challenge deep-seated biases, and immerse yourself in the expanse of human narratives to create a world rich in acceptance and unity. Key point five, harnessing inner calm. The Epiphany Prep Charter School stands in City Heights, near San Diego, a valuable education opportunity for its diverse, low-income student population. Beyond its quest for academic excellence, the school passionately champions the holistic growth of its students. Many of these children have witnessed neighborhood violence that scarred their emotional and cognitive well-being. Imagine constant stress. Focusing becomes impossible, resilience crumbles, and emotional health deteriorates. Empathy often takes a back seat in such conditions. Children in survival mode find connecting with the emotions of others strenuous. Additionally, the trauma of constantly witnessing pain can lead to compassion fatigue, creating emotional exhaustion. However, while altering external circumstances is essential, there's also profound power in equipping these young minds with the right internal tools. You must understand your own feelings to navigate the emotions of others. Self-regulation is a versatile toolkit containing self-awareness, emotional literacy, self-management, and problem-solving. A child equipped with these techniques can weather any emotional storm and emerge centered, calm, and ready to engage. Practical classroom strategies like peace chairs and calm down corners prove effective. These tools, designed for the most stressed generation, are sanctuaries where students can pause, look within, and recalibrate their emotions. The effects of self-regulation extend beyond emotional control. When children can manage their feelings, they become better learners, capable of handling personal distress and genuinely connecting with others. Such an ability leads them away from self-absorption and toward heartfelt compassion. Self-regulation is also a vital life skill. Research hints that it predicts academic triumph, outshining IQ scores. As children transition into adulthood, this skill shapes their health, financial stability, and resilience. Teaching children to self-regulate is equivalent to granting them a shield. With its help, their empathy remains untapped despite life's challenges. In addition to self-regulation, acts of kindness can elevate our sense of happiness and self-worth and fortify social responsibilities. Besides, kindness is a muscle that grows robust with each act. This strength increases joy and improves bonds among peers. 
It illustrates that greatness isn't always in big deeds. The smallest gesture can leave a lasting imprint. So, when a chance to display kindness arises, grasp it, as even the tiniest act is appreciated. Key point six, the universal language of play. Aldama Elementary School pioneered another empathy-related approach during recess. With 685 students, the institution has wholeheartedly embraced the PlayWorks program. This initiative underscores the essence of collaboration, teamwork, and the most universal language of all, play. Its aim is transparent yet profound, to mold an environment where distinctions like us and them are rendered obsolete, encouraging kids to function harmoniously. Jaron Williams, the creator of the PlayWorks program, identified the vital role of a secure haven for students. Their surroundings often echo their daily challenges, houses marred with graffiti and businesses guarded behind metal barriers. For many, the playground becomes their only refuge for unrestrained outdoor fun. The PlayWorks methodology is hands-on and interactive. For instance, Lisa Frias, affectionately known as Coach, engaged her fifth graders with a poignant question during a routine session. She asked, what's our agreement for healthy play? Their answer spoke volumes. Include everyone, be kind, work together, and have fun. Don't underestimate games and playtime. They are a source of life lessons for kids. PlayWorks focuses on inclusivity and joint efforts and aims to instill the value of teamwork and mutual understanding in young minds. Immersed in organized playtimes, students develop conflict resolution abilities and hone their communication skills. They grasp a universal truth. Despite various superficial differences, we all experience the same core emotions and dreams. So, what's the magic behind emphasizing play? In essence, play is a dialect understood globally. It's the canvas on which children depict their thoughts, relate to peers, and forge unforgettable connections. Most importantly, play mirrors broader communities. The difficulties, disputes, and connections during games emulate society. By arming kids with skills to steer these playground dynamics, we're setting the stage for them to handle similar situations later in life. In a nutshell, Aldama Elementary's integration of PlayWorks reiterates that when young students are oriented to perceive us over us versus them, they cultivate empathy and are better equipped to shape an inclusive, compassionate, and kind environment. Did you know? The PlayWorks program includes teaching kids conflict resolvers. Kids often solve disagreements with rock, paper, scissors, or use the one mic, microphone technique, where only one person at a time speaks. Key point seven, empathy in action. To sum up our deep dive into empathy, let's explore the story of young Trevor Farrell, captivated by a television segment showing the hardships faced by Philadelphia's homeless. The striking contrast between his shielded suburban existence and the adversities experienced by those without a roof struck a chord. Motivated by this stark disparity, Trevor embarked on a journey downtown with his parents' support. He carried his prized pillow and blanket and approached a homeless man, presenting him with these modest tokens. The man's beaming appreciation highlighted the impact of genuine, empathy-fueled gestures. This episode became a pivotal moment for Trevor, marking what many would deem an empathetic epiphany. Such unanticipated moments have the power to alter a person's worldview radically. They pave the way from a me-centered perspective to a we-oriented outlook, illuminating our common emotional experiences. True empathy is feelings converging with actions. Compassion is more than mere emotional understanding with others. It's an active force, compelling us to understand another's pain and alleviate it. This dynamic nature of empathy shapes children into catalysts of change who actively address and solve challenges. Children brought up with an empathetic mindset understand the transformative power of kindness and can leverage it to better their surroundings. Empathy can be instilled, and it is composed of teachable habits that can be developed, practiced, and lived. Mikel Borba. For example, consider the story of six-year-old Dylan Siegel. When his closest friend, Jonah Pornazarian, was diagnosed with a liver condition, Dylan offered more than sympathy. He authored Chocolate Bar, a book that has since raised money for researching Jonah's problem. Dylan's approach demonstrates the power of empathy. It's a potent reminder that age is no barrier when compassion fuels actions. Championing empathy is essential in our society, where many divides seem increasingly evident. By encouraging this practical side of caring, we raise kind-hearted individuals who will become future leaders, thinkers, and innovators. These people, united by a sense of togetherness, will positively impact the world. That's the essence of genuine caring. Conclusion. As our journey into understanding empathy ends, we face its profound influence on individual hearts and entire communities. Genuine empathy isn't a cognitive exercise of stepping into another's shoes, but wearing those shoes and walking a mile. And the ripples of this understanding don't stop with singular actions. One act of genuine empathy creates concentric circles, inspiring others in its wake. This cascading effect has the potential to transform countless lives. It dismantles walls and cultivates a culture of unity and inclusivity. 
Empathy is like a resilient bridge over the gaps in a world marked by deep divisions. It nudges us to look beyond superficial differences and discern the shared human experience beneath. When we do, the distinctions blur and the similarities come into sharp focus. So, remember to understand empathy and act upon it. Every individual can impact others, touch souls, and sculpt a more understanding and compassionate world. We must harness the collective strength of us, knowing that when united by empathy, there's no hurdle we can't overcome. After all, genuine connections aren't about finding similarities, but understanding differences. Try this. Practice active listening by truly hearing what someone is saying without preparing a response. Once a day, put yourself in someone else's shoes and reflect on their perspective. Prioritize acts of kindness. A simple gesture can make a difference. Engage in team activities or games that require cooperation and understanding. Seek opportunities to learn about different cultures, experiences, and backgrounds.